Emily, a passionate historian who recently inherited the antique wedding veil from her grandmother. Emily is dedicated to uncovering the history behind the veil and its magical properties. She is also dealing with the recent loss of her grandmother and the responsibility of preserving her legacy. Daniel, a charming architect who has returned to his hometown to help restore the town's historic buildings for the holiday season. Daniel is struggling with his own personal loss and is seeking a fresh start. Plot Summary Emily returns to her hometown for the holidays, bringing the antique wedding veil with her. She is determined to learn more about the veil's origins and the legend that surrounds it. Her grandmother, who recently passed away, always believed in the magic of the veil and its ability to bring true love. Emily is skeptical, but feels a strong connection to her grandmother's legacy. Daniel, a successful architect, has also returned to his hometown to oversee the restoration of the town's historic buildings. He is dealing with the recent loss of his fiancée and is looking for a new beginning. When Emily and Daniel meet, there is an immediate spark, but both are cautious due to their past experiences. As Emily delves deeper into the history of the Vale, she discovers a series of letters and diary entries from couples who have found love through the Vale. These stories inspire her and give her hope that the legend might be true. Emily and Daniel are drawn together as they work on the town's holiday events, and their connection grows stronger with each passing day. However, Emily's skepticism and Daniel's fear of getting hurt again create obstacles in their budding romance. It's only when they find a hidden letter from Emily's grandmother, addressed to her, that they realize the true power of the wedding veil and the importance of opening their hearts to love and new beginnings. In a heartwarming climax, Daniel uses his architectural skills to create a stunning holiday display in the town square, incorporating elements from the veil's history. Emily, inspired by her grandmother's words, decides to take a leap of faith. The movie concludes with a magical Christmas Eve proposal, with the antique wedding veil playing a central role in their newfound love. Chapter 5. Themes and Messages A wedding veil holiday movie would explore themes of love, loss, and the courage to embrace new beginnings. The magic of the holiday season, combined with the enchantment of the wedding veil, would create a story that resonates with viewers on multiple levels. The movie would emphasize the importance of family traditions, the power of belief, and the beauty of finding love when you least expect it. Chapter 6. Casting the Magic The success of a Hallmark holiday movie heavily relies on its casting. Bringing back familiar faces from the Wedding Veil series, along with introducing new characters, would create a sense of continuity and excitement. Here are some potential casting choices. Emily, played by Lacey Chabert. Known for her roles in numerous Hallmark movies, Lacey brings warmth and relatability to the character of Emily. Her ability to portray vulnerability and strength makes her a perfect fit for the role. Daniel, played by Andrew Walker, another Hallmark favorite. Andrew's charm and depth would bring Daniel's character to life. His chemistry with Lacey Chabert has been proven in previous collaborations, making their on-screen romance believable and engaging. Supporting Characters Maggie, Emily's best friend, played by Autumn Reeser. Maggie provides comic relief and unwavering support, encouraging Emily to believe in the magic of the veil. Tom, Daniel's childhood friend and co-worker, played by Tyler Hines. Tom offers Daniel advice and helps him navigate his feelings for Emily. Chapter 7. Creating the Holiday Atmosphere The hallmark of a Hallmark holiday movie is its ability to transport viewers into a festive wonderland. The setting plays a crucial role in creating the right atmosphere. For The Wedding Veil, A Christmas Promise, the town would be transformed into a holiday paradise, complete with 1. The Town Square The heart of the town, beautifully decorated with a massive Christmas tree, twinkling lights, and festive market stalls. The square becomes the focal point for the movie's holiday events, including a Christmas fair, caroling, and the grand holiday display designed by Daniel. The Historic Inn Emily stays at a charming historic inn that is decked out in holiday decor. The inn, owned by a wise and kind innkeeper, serves as a place of comfort and reflection for Emily. 3. The Town's Landmarks The restoration of the town's historic buildings provides a backdrop for Emily and Daniel's growing connection.
The buildings are adorned with wreaths, garlands, and twinkling lights, enhancing the, the movie's wedding festive. veil holiday movie. Hallmark is celebrating 15 years of countdown to Christmas this October. They plan on some extra special movies for Christmas 2024. They have already reunited former When Calls the Heart couple Aaron Krakow and Aaron Krakow for Santa Tell Me. In addition, they just filmed in Iceland and in Santa's village in Finland in the upcoming holiday movie, The Finnish Line. Could Hallmark reunite the Wedding Veil vale trio and make a special holiday movie or movies this year? One of the stars, Alison Sweeney, shares what she hopes happens. What did Ali have to say? What is Alison Sweeney's response to a Wedding Veil vale holiday movie? Alison Sweeney was recently on a press tour for her new Hallmark Mystery One Bad Apple, a Hannah Swenson mystery. Speaking to U.S. Magazine, she was asked whether or not the Wedding Veil vale trio could possibly make a holiday movie. Her response was positive. Since the first trilogy came out in 2022, Hallmark viewers have fallen in love with best pals Avery, Emma, and Tracy, and the magical veil that brings love to the person who has it. There have been two trilogies, and fans want more. Does Allison agree? However, this is not a passive statement. It sounds like something is brewing. Sweeney shared a little more insight into what is happening behind the scenes. Therefore, it certainly sounds like the cast would like to reunite. Now they need to develop an idea. Could it be a countdown to Christmas movie? It could certainly be a fun idea to see these friends celebrate the holidays in their unique ways. That could include some Italian traditions, a trip to a European Christmas market, and perhaps even another magical antique. Alison Sweeney is working with Victor Webster in a Hallmark movie again. Currently, Alison Sweeney is working with Victor Webster on another Hallmark project. Victor has joined the Hannah Swenson cast as Chad Norton, Lake Eden's prosecutor. His first movie is One Bad Apple, and they should be filming another soon. Hallmark fans, would you like to see BF's Avery, Emma, and Tracy reunite for a holiday wedding veil movie or another trilogy? Share your thoughts in the comments below. The Hallmark Channel has long been synonymous with heartwarming, family-friendly movies that celebrate love, hope, and the magic of the holiday season. Known for their charming settings, relatable characters, and feel-good narratives, Hallmark movies have become a staple of holiday entertainment. One of Hallmark's successful franchises is the Wedding Veil vale series, which has captivated audiences with its romantic and enchanting storyline. The question arises, could Hallmark combine the beloved elements of the Wedding Veil vale series with the festive spirit of the holiday season to create a Wedding Veil vale holiday movie? Chapter 2 the appeal of the Wedding Veil vale series. The Wedding Veil vale series follows a group of friends who discover an antique wedding veil with a legend that claims whoever possesses it will find their true love. The series has resonated with viewers for its blend of romance, mystery, and the close-knit friendship among the protagonists. The antique wedding veil, vale, passed down through generations, serves as a symbol of love, destiny, and the enduring power of tradition. The series' success can be attributed to its relatable characters, each with their unique love stories and personal challenges, and the mystical element of the veil, which adds an intriguing layer of enchantment. The concept of a magical object influencing the course of true love taps into the universal desire for a touch of magic in our lives, making it a perfect candidate for a holiday-themed movie. Chapter 3. The Holiday Season and Romance The holiday season is inherently romantic, the twinkling lights, festive decorations, and the spirit of giving create an atmosphere that is ripe for love stories. Hallmark has mastered the art of blending romance with holiday cheer, producing countless holiday movies that have become cherished traditions for many families. Incorporating the magic of The Wedding Veil vale into a holiday setting would not only enhance the romantic appeal, but also add a layer of warmth and nostalgia that audiences crave during the holiday season. Chapter 4 crafting the perfect plot. To create a Wedding Veil vale holiday movie, the plot must seamlessly integrate the elements of the original series with the festive spirit of the holidays. Here is a potential storyline that could bring this idea to life. Plot Outline Title The Wedding Veil vale, – A Christmas Promise Setting The movie takes place in a picturesque small town known for its elaborate holiday celebrations.
the town square is adorned with twinkling lights, and the scent of pine and cinnamon fills the air. The backdrop of snow-covered landscapes and cozy, fire-lit cottages sets the stage for a heartwarming and holiday Alexa romance. Penavega share tragic loss of baby number four. Hallmark sweethearts and authors Carlos and Alexa Penavega have just shared the tragic loss of their fourth baby. The two announced that they were expecting baby number four in November 2023, but sadly, the dream has crashed. Keep reading for more details. After a short marriage to someone else, Spy Kids star Alexa Penavega and Carlos Penavega fell in love and tied the knot. That was a decade ago, and together they have formed a beautiful family. They are both dedicated to their faith, which has kept them grounded as well as their family. The duo has three children, Kingston, Rio, and Ocean, but were excited for their second daughter to join them. They posted a photo of Alexa with her bump, all in pink latex and a green fur shrug. She was leaning back onto Carlos, who was standing behind her with his hand on her tummy this past November. At the same time, they were still in shock that they would be adding another little one to their brood. Unfortunately, tragedy struck, and they shared this horrible news via their respective Instagrams. Their daughter made it into the world, but sadly, she could not stay. They explained that Indy was born at rest, though they did say that the delivery was both beautiful and peaceful. It was noted how she looked like her father, and despite how heartbroken they are, the Panavegas feel blessed. They feel lucky that they were able to spend just a moment with their daughter. The couple concluded by saying they could not wait to see how many lives she would change. Of course, the comments of support came pouring in. Alan Burstyn, who is a pro dancer on DDTS, which the couple competed on, wrote this, So sorry for your loss. Sending you guys so much love. Fellow pro and mom, Lindsay Arnold Cusick added, I am so, so sorry for your loss. Sending prayers of comfort and peace to you all. What's next? Carlos and Alexa Penavega are so surrounded by love. Here are some more messages of love they have received since making this post. Hopefully, they will lean on one another through this dark time as well as their faith as that is what seems to keep them the strongest. Sending so much love and light to the Penavegas during this gut-wrenching time in their lives. There are simply no words. In the public eye, celebrities often appear larger than life showcasing their talents, success, and seemingly perfect lies. However, they also experience the full spectrum of human emotions, including profound grief and loss. Carlos and Alexa Penavega, known for their charismatic presence on screen and in music, have recently opened up about a deeply personal and heartbreaking experience, the loss of their fourth baby. This devastating event has touched the hearts of their fans and brought attention to the often overlooked issue of pregnancy loss. Carlos and Alexa Penavega A brief background Carlos Penavega rose to fame as a member of the pop group Big Time Rush, as well as through his acting career, which includes notable roles in the Nickelodeon series Big Time Rush. Alexa Penavega, formerly Alexa Vega, gained widespread recognition for her role as Carmen Cortez in the Spy Kids series. The couple, who married in 2014, have since become beloved figures in both the entertainment industry and among their fans. Their love story, family life, and faith have been well documented through social media and various public appearances. The announcement, sharing the pain. In a heartfelt and emotional post, Carlos and Alexa Penavega shared the news of their tragic loss with their followers. Their openness about this deeply personal experience has sparked conversations about the realities of pregnancy loss and the importance of mental and emotional support for those going through similar situations. Falling in love and starting a family Carlos and Alexa's love story began in 2013, and they quickly became one of Hollywood's favorite couples. Their chemistry was evident, and their shared values, including their strong Christian faith, laid the foundation for a loving and supportive relationship. They married in January 2014, and their journey into parenthood soon followed. The joy of welcoming their first three children. The Panavigas family began to grow with the birth of their first child, Ocean King, in December 2016. Their second child, Kingston James, was born in June 2019 followed by their daughter, Rhea Ray, in May 2021.
Each addition to their family was celebrated with joy and gratitude, and the couple often shared their experiences of parenthood with their fans. The excitement of expecting baby number four. When Carlos and Alexa announced they were expecting their fourth child, their fans rejoiced with them. The couple's enthusiasm was palpable, and they looked forward to welcoming another blessing into their lives. However, life took an unexpected fan, and heartbreaking Posting turn. under the username HallmarkFin4 ever, wrote, I've been a loyal viewer of Hallmark movies for years, but I can't support branching out knowing what's been happening behind the scenes. Hallmark stands for values of kindness, integrity, and respect. This movie seems to contradict everything they've preached. Others expressed sadness over the situation lamenting the potential tarnishing of Hallmark's reputation as a beacon of positivity and moral guidance in entertainment. Amidst the growing controversy, Sarah Drew herself broke her silence with a heartfelt statement posted on her social media accounts. In it, she acknowledged the concerns of fans and expressed her own disappointment over the situation. I want to assure everyone that the issues surrounding branching out are being taken seriously, Sarah wrote. As an actress and a believer in creating meaningful, uplifting stories, I am deeply troubled by the allegations that have come to light. I want to be clear that I stand for values of respect and professionalism in every project I'm involved in. Sarah's statement was met with mixed reactions. While some fans appreciated her transparency and willingness to address the controversy directly, others remained skeptical questioning whether her involvement in branching out inadvertently endorsed the problematic aspects of the production. The actress, known for her candor and sincerity, continued to engage with fans through social media, answering questions and providing updates on the situation as it unfolded. Her efforts to maintain open communication with her audience earned her respect from many, even as the boycott persisted. As the boycott gained momentum, Hallmark Channel found itself at a crossroads. The network, known for its carefully curated image of wholesome entertainment, faced mounting pressure to address the concerns raised by fans regarding branching out. In a carefully worded statement released to the press, Hallmark executives acknowledged the controversy surrounding the movie and emphasized their commitment to upholding the values that had endeared them to millions of viewers. We take the concerns of our fans seriously, the statement read. The issues surrounding branching out are currently under review, and we are working diligently to ensure that every project associated with our network reflects the standards of excellence and integrity that Hallmark Channel stands for. However, the statement did little to quell the discontent among fans who felt that Hallmark's response was insufficient. Calls for greater transparency and accountability echoed across social media platforms, with demands for a more thorough investigation into the alleged controversies surrounding the production of Branching Out. As the boycott of Branching Out continued to divide the Hallmark community, both fans and industry insiders reflected on the broader implications of the controversy. For many viewers, the situation raised questions about the ethical responsibilities of entertainment companies and the importance of holding them accountable for their actions. In online discussions and op-eds published in entertainment magazines, writers debated the balance between artistic freedom and ethical standards in filmmaking. Some argued that while creative expression should be valued, it should never come at the expense of basic human decency and environmental stewardship. Others pointed to the power of consumer activism, noting that boycotts and public outcry had historically been effective in prompting positive change within industries. They called on Hallmark and other entertainment networks to listen to their audiences and prioritize integrity and transparency in all aspects of production. For Sarah Drew, the controversy surrounding branching out was a sobering reminder of the impact that entertainment can have on its audience. As an actress committed to telling meaningful stories, she continued to advocate for greater accountability and respect within the industry, hoping to bridge the divide between fans and filmmakers. Epilogue Moving forward, as time passed and emotions began to settle, the boycott of Branching Out served as a pivotal moment in the history of Hallmark movies. It sparked important conversations about ethics, values, and the responsibilities of those involved in creating entertainment that resonates with audiences worldwide. While the outcome of the controversy remained uncertain, one thing was clear. The passion and dedication of Hallmark fans were unwavering. Whether they chose to boycott Branching Out or continue supporting other Hallmark productions, 
their voices had been heard, and their commitment to upholding the values they cherished was stronger than ever. As the entertainment industry evolved, Hallmark Channel and its counterparts faced renewed scrutiny and accountability, prompting a commitment to greater NGCTAs. transparency. Who shot Lucas? Pascal Hutton reveals it may not be who Hardys suspect. Welcome to my channel, Hallmark's Gossip 24, where you can get news about. For more information, kindly subscribe and follow, and I am your buddy. Now let's get started. WCTA Season 11 is rolling on but Hardys still do not know who shot the newly elected governor, Lucas Bouchard. Pascal Hutton, who portrays intrepid reporter Rosemary Coulter, recently spoke about the secret investigation into who did this dastardly deed. Moreover, Hutton has revealed that the person responsible may not be who Hardy suspected is. What clues did Pascal share about this mystery? Moreover, how did the inclusion of Jack Wagner, who plays former Mountie Bill Avery, add to this storyline? Pascal Hutton breaks down WCT8 mystery. Although things seem to be blossoming in Holt Valley in these early episodes of WCT8 season 11, there still is a lurking question in the minds of a few residents, Rosemary and Bill, and of course, Rosemary's husband Lilid Coulter, Kevin Smith, are not satisfied with who has been accused of shooting newly elected Governor Lucas Bouchard. Now, Rosemary and Bill are privately investigating this crime. On Sunday, Pascal Hutton spoke to TV Insider about this storyline. What does this star of the long-running Hallmark series have to say about this mystery? Firstly, she reveals that getting Bill on board was the first major obstacle. Bill was the hurdle for her to get over. She had to win him over. She needed that partnership. Then Pascal explained further. She had the information and resources, but he also did, and they really needed each other to partner up. Not only was this a perfect mystery-solving team, but this turned out to have further entertainment value. Pascal shared that I love the comedy of his reticence to take her on and her perseverance and determination to make this happen. Right now, the big suspect is Bernhard Montag, Benjamin Wilkinson. Could he be the mastermind? Hutton shares their methodical thought process. While they are not willing to rule him out, but they're also not willing to zero in on him, either as the one and only suspect. Instead, they are going to widen the potential suspect list. Pascal confirms that new suspects emerge. That is because Montague doesn't seem so obvious the more they dig. Hardys could be surprised as the suspect may not be who anyone thinks it could be. But in the end, Hutton warns that Rosemary may end up in trouble due to her investigation. Pascal elaborates on this. How can Hardys watch when calls the heart? WCTA Season 11 airs on Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Hallmark Channel. In addition, anyone who has Peacock can stream new episodes up to 72 hours after the premiere. Lastly, those hardies who subscribe to the Hallmark Movies Now app can watch new episodes on the next day. Hardies, are you invested in learning who shot Lucas Bouchard? The crisp autumn air carried a hint of mystery through the quiet streets of Hope Valley. The town, known for its tight-knit community and picturesque landscapes, was abuzz with whispers and speculation. At the heart of this entry was the shocking event that had rocked the town to its core, the shooting of Lucas Bouchard, the charismatic owner of the saloon. Lucas had always been a polarizing figure in Hope Valley. Some admired his business acumen and charm, while others distrusted his motives and suspected him of having a hidden agenda. Now, as he lay in the hospital recovering from the gunshot wound, the entire town was left wondering, who had pulled the trigger? As news of the shooting spread, the residents of Hope Valley gathered in small groups, speculating about possible suspects. Could it have been a disgruntled business rival? A jilted lover? Or perhaps someone with a hidden grudge against Lucas? One person who seemed particularly troubled by the incident was Elizabeth Thornton the beloved schoolteacher who had captured the hearts of many in Holt Valley, including Lucas himself. Elizabeth found herself drawn into the mystery, despite her initial reluctance to get involved in the town's gossip. Sheriff Nathan Grant, a stalwart figure in Holt Valley known for his fairness and determination, wasted no time in launching an investigation into the shooting. With the help of his deputy, Bill Avery, Nathan meticulously gathered evidence and interviewed witnesses in an effort to uncover the truth. 
One of the first people Nathan interviewed was Fiona Miller, a waitress at the saloon who had been working the night of the shooting. Fiona recounted the events of that fateful evening, describing how Lucas had been in good spirits, chatting with patrons and overseeing the busy establishment. She had stepped outside briefly to take out the trash when she heard the gunshot ring out. I rushed back inside and saw Lucas clutching his shoulder. Hallmarks, Blood seeping The Christmas Quest shirt. stars Lacey Chappert, Christopher Polaha in Iceland Treasure Hunt. Hallmark has created the Dream Christmas Team. Christmas Queen Lacey Chabert and Christmas King Christopher Polaha have been matched up for a new countdown to Christmas movie called The Christmas Quest. This new Christmas romantic adventure movie is the first time Chris and Lacey have been cast as love interests, but the second time they have been in the same movie together. The Hallmark Channel is celebrating its 15-year anniversary of Countdown to Christmas this holiday season and they just upped their stakes with this new announcement. What has the Feel Good Network revealed about this holiday release? Here are the first details released. Lacey Chappert and Christopher Polaha just made a Hallmark Christmas movie. Christmas may not be for another 250-odd days, but the Hallmark Channel has already been busy filming for the holiday season. On Wednesday, TV Line reported that the network paired up Lacey Chabert and Christopher Palaha in the new adventure romance, The Christmas Quest. Best of all, the pair just filmed on location in gorgeous Iceland. What is this movie about? Lacey portrays an archaeologist, while Christopher portrays her ex-husband, an old Norse language expert. The two are reunited and sent to Iceland at Christmas time to search for a legendary treasure. However, this pair is not the only people in search of this treasure. When others join in the hunt, the pair find themselves swept into a thrilling adventure as they race to keep it from falling into the wrong hands. Lacey Chappert and Christopher Palaha bring on the charm. Hallmark's The Christmas Quest promises to showcase these two charming leads in a movie with a twist. Samantha DePippo, who is the Senior Vice President of Development and Programming at Hallmark Media gave viewers a little more insight into this upcoming movie. This movie sounds like it has some romancing the stone DNA in it. How long will fans have to wait to see this new holiday movie? When will The Christmas Quest premiere? Has Hallmark revealed when they will premiere The Christmas Quest? They have not. However, it seems likely that their movie together will air around Thanksgiving weekend. That guesstimate is based on last season's schedule. Both Lacey's and Merry Scottish Christmas and Christopher's of Biltmore Christmas got top holiday billing, airing over Thanksgiving weekend. However, Hallmark should release the official 2024 countdown to Christmas schedule sometime during September. Christmas movie fans, are you getting excited for countdown to Christmas 2024? The air was crisp with the promise of winter's arrival as the small town of Evergreen prepared for its annual Christmas festivities. For Lacey Chabert's character, Kate Adams, this time of year held special significance. As an archaeologist and history enthusiast, Kate found herself captivated by stories of lost treasures and ancient mysteries. Christopher Polaha's character, Jack Turner, shared her passion for history but approached it with a more skeptical eye. A travel writer by profession, Jack preferred to focus on the tangible experiences of the present rather than the speculative allure of the past. Their paths crossed unexpectedly at the Evergreen Christmas Market, where Kate was giving a lecture on local folklore and legends. Jack, ever the curious journalist, attended the lecture out of sheer curiosity and found himself intrigued by Kate's enthusiasm and expertise. Little did they know, their meeting at the Christmas market would mark the beginning of a grand adventure that would take them far beyond the cozy confines of Evergreen. Chapter 2 A Mysterious Invitation The turning point came when Kate received an unexpected letter in the mail. The envelope was sealed with an intricate wax seal bearing the emblem of a Nordic rune, a symbol of ancient wisdom and mystery. Inside, she found an invitation to participate in an archaeological expedition to Iceland, led by renowned historian Professor Magnusson. The expedition, dubbed the Christmas Quest, promised to uncover the secrets of a legendary treasure hidden deep within the Icelandic countryside. Rumored to be linked to the ancient Vikings and their seafaring adventures, the treasure had eluded discovery for centuries, shrouded in myth and folklore. Kate, unable to resist the call of adventure, immediately accepted the invitation.
Her excitement was palpable as she shared the news with Jack, who, despite his initial skepticism, found himself drawn to the allure of uncovering a centuries-old mystery. Together, they embarked on a journey that would not only test their skills as adventurers, but also challenge their beliefs about the power of history he to connect the past with but in present. obvious pain. I called for help, and we got him to the hospital as quickly as we could. Nathan listened intently, jotting down notes as Fiona spoke. He made a mental note to follow up with other witnesses who had been present that night, hoping that someone had seen or heard something that could lead to a breakthrough in the case. Chapter 3 Secrets and Suspicions Meanwhile, in the quiet confines of her cozy home, Elizabeth Thornton couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the shooting than met the eye. She had known Lucas for some time now, ever since he had arrived in Hope Valley and set up his saloon. Despite their differences in background and temperament, Elizabeth had developed a cautious friendship with Lucas, recognizing a loneliness in him that mirrored her own. Sitting at her desk, Elizabeth pulled out a small notebook and began jotting down her own thoughts and suspicions. She had overheard snippets of conversation around town, whispers of old grudges and hidden rivalries that could potentially provide a motive for someone to harm Lucas. But as she delved deeper into her own investigation, Elizabeth found herself facing unexpected obstacles. Some townspeople were reluctant to talk, either out of fear or a desire to protect their own secrets. Others seemed genuinely clueless, insisting that they had seen or heard nothing out of the ordinary on the night of the shooting. Elizabeth knew she had to tread carefully. While she was determined to uncover the truth for Lucas's sake, she also understood the delicate balance of trust and loyalty that bound the community together. She couldn't afford to alienate anyone or risk damaging her reputation as a fair and compassionate teacher. Chapter 4. Unraveling the Mystery As days turned into weeks, the mystery of who shot Lucas continued to haunt Hope Valley. Sheriff Nathan Grant and his deputy, Bill Avery worked tirelessly to follow every lead and piece together the puzzle of that fateful night. They interviewed Lucas himself once he was well enough to speak, but his memory of the events leading up to the shooting was hazy at best. He insisted that he had no enemies in town, that he had always tried to conduct his business fairly and with integrity. But Nathan couldn't shake the feeling that there was something Lucas wasn't telling him, some detail that could be crucial to solving the case. Meanwhile, Elizabeth Thornton continued to gather information discreetly, using her position as a trusted member of the community to coax out snippets of gossip and speculation. She learned about a heated argument Lucas had had with a rival businessman over a lucrative land deal, a dispute that had escalated into threats and accusations. Could this rival businessman be the one responsible for the shooting? Elizabeth wondered. Or was there another, more personal motive at play? Chapter 5 Revelations and Resolution The breakthrough in the case came unexpectedly one afternoon when Nathan received an anonymous tip. The caller, speaking in hushed tones, claimed to have witnessed the shooting and knew the identity of the perpetrator. With renewed determination, Nathan and Bill followed up on the tip, eventually uncovering evidence that led them to a surprising suspect, someone close to Lucas, someone who had been harboring resentment and jealousy for years. As the pieces of the puzzle fell into place, Elizabeth Thornton found herself confronting uncomfortable truths about the people she thought she knew. She realized that everyone, no matter how seemingly virtuous or innocent, had their own secrets and flaws. In the end, justice was served, but not without a cost. The shooting of Lucas Bouchard had shaken Hope Valley to its core, revealing the fragile bonds that held the community together but it had also strengthened those bonds, reminding the residents of the town of the importance of trust, forgiveness, and compassion. As Hope Valley slowly returned to normalcy, Elizabeth Thornton reflected on the events that had unfolded. She knew that the wounds caused by the shooting would take time to heal, but she was confident that with patience and understanding, the town would emerge stronger than ever. And as for Lucas Bouchard, he found himself humbled by the outpouring of support from the community he had grown to love. He vowed to use his second chance to make amends and to contribute positively to the town that had become his home. Epilogue, Hope Renewed In the quiet hours before dawn, Elizabeth Thornton stood at her window, gazing out at the tranquil streets of Hope Valley. The events of the past weeks seemed like a distant memory now, 
overshadowed by the sense of renewal and hope that permeated the town. She thought of Lucas Bouchard and the resilience he had shown in the face of adversity. She thought of Sheriff Nathan Grant and his unwavering commitment to justice. And she thought Why of the townspeople of fans Hope boycotting Bank. Sarah Drew's movie Branching Out. Viewers are annoyed at Hallmark's handling of a controversial subject matter that is at the core of the new spring into love movie Branching Out. Starring in this movie is Grey's alum Sarah Drew and Juan Pablo D. Pace. This is the story of a single mother who has a daughter through IVF. While IVF is currently a controversial subject right now, that is not fully why many fans are talking about boycotting this movie. What did these fans have to say and why are they boycotting it? Hallmark fans on social media dissecting new Sarah Drew movie branching out. On Thursday, one Hallmark fan went to Reddit to share that she is annoyed with the subject matter of Sarah Drew's new spring into love movie branching out. It should be noted that this movie is premiering on the Hallmark Channel on Saturday, April 27, at 8 p.m. Eastern, unlike what this poster shared. This is what they said in the post entitled, Ranching Out. This led to a rabbit hole of discussion about the network and why are they boycotting it. What were fans so upset about? It seems that they are upset with the network's treatment of this subject matter. What did fans have to say about branching out premise? What did fans have to say about the upcoming Sarah Drew Hallmark movie branching out? Some, like the poster, will be boycotting this movie. However, others are open to Hallmark telling a different sort of story. Here are the replies to the initial post. What does official Hallmark branching out synopsis say? Lastly, the summation of the plot of the story shared by the Reddit poster is not exactly correct. According to the official Hallmark synopsis, Amelia, Sarah Drew's character, does have the baby via IVF. It is now 10 years later and Ruby, the daughter, has to do a family tree for her school assignment. However, there are very few branches on the tree. They use a DNA test, and Amelia discovers the father of her child, T.J. Cruz, played by Juan Pablo de Pace, is a musician who lives nearby. After Amelia contacts him, he surprisingly wants to meet his daughter. Moreover, after many family get-togethers, Ruby now can experience some of her Mexican heritage and add some branches to her school project. As this is a Hallmark movie, there should be no surprise that romance brews. Also, there is a misunderstanding. Can anyone guess what will happen at the end? But should fans be concerned? Maybe they will want to tune in instead of boycotting. Firstly, this movie was written by one of Hallmark's best screenwriters, Joey Botkin, based on Melissa Bustamante's story. In addition, it was directed by McLean Nelson, who has been at the helm of so many outstanding movies, including both Haul Out the Holly movies and The Presence of Love. Also, Sarah Drew and Juan Pablo de Pace are exceptional and sensitive actors who should be able to add something special to this subject matter. Hallmark fans, will you be tuning in to watch Branching Out on Saturday, April 27, at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Hallmark Channel? The premiere of Branching Out is on Saturday, April 27, at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Hallmark Channel. The world of Hallmark movies had always been a haven for wholesome entertainment, filled with heartwarming stories and familiar faces that viewers could rely on for a comforting escape. Sarah Drew, known for her role in beloved TV series and Hallmark movies, was a fan favorite, celebrated for her warm smile and genuine performances. When news broke of Sarah Drew's latest Hallmark movie, branching out, fans were initially thrilled. The announcement came with promises of a touching storyline, picturesque settings, and, of course, Sarah Drew's signature charm. However, excitement soon turned to confusion and disappointment as whispers of a boycott began to circulate among dedicated Hallmark fans. The reason? Allegations of behind-the-scenes controversies and ethical concerns surrounding the production of Branching Out. As details trickled out through social media and fan forums, longtime viewers of Hallmark movies found themselves faced with a moral dilemma. Should they support a movie that seemed to go against the values of family-friendly entertainment that Hallmark had long espoused? The backlash against branching out gained momentum quickly. On Twitter, hashtags like hashtag boycott branching out and hashtag Hallmark values matter trended as fans expressed their disappointment and disillusionment.
many cited concerns over the alleged treatment of cast and crew during filming, rumors of creative differences that led to a rushed production schedule, and even accusations of environmental disregard on set locations. In online forums dedicated to Hallmark movies, discussions grew heated. Fans who had eagerly anticipated Sarah Drew's return to the screen now found themselves questioning their loyalty to a network they had long admired for its commitment Others to wholesome family about Miss Walker's background and reasons for choosing to settle in Hope Valley. Some suggested she was fleeing a broken heart, while others imagined she was a wealthy Harris seeking solitude. The truth, however, remained shrouded in mystery. In the sheriff's office, Sheriff Nathan Grant and Deputy Bill Avery exchanged knowing looks as they overheard snippets of conversations while going over their morning reports. Newcomers always stir things up, Nathan remarked with a chuckle, but Miss Walker seems to have the whole town abuzz. Bill nodded in agreement, his brow furrowed thoughtfully. Do you think she's running from something, Sheriff? Or is there more to her story than meets the eye? Nathan sighed, adjusting his hat thoughtfully. Time will tell, Bill. Time will tell. Chapter 3. Unveiling Secrets. Meanwhile, at the schoolhouse, Elizabeth Thornton found herself intrigued by Miss Walker's presence. The new arrival had enrolled her niece and nephew, Laura and Daniel, in Elizabeth's classroom, eager for them to continue their education in this idyllic setting. As Elizabeth taught her students, her mind wandered to Miss Walker and the air of mystery that surrounded her. She couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the young woman than met the eye, a sentiment shared by many in Hope Valley. During recess, Elizabeth took the opportunity to chat with Miss Walker, hoping to learn more about her background and intentions. I must admit, Miss Walker, Elizabeth began gently, the townspeople are quite taken with your arrival. You've certainly piqued our curiosity. Miss Walker chuckled softly, her eyes twinkling with amusement. I'm afraid I don't have any scandalous secrets to share, Miss Thornton. I simply felt drawn to this charming town and its welcoming community. Elizabeth nodded, studying Miss Walker thoughtfully. Well, we're glad to have you here, Miss Walker. If there's anything you need, or if you have any questions about Hope Valley, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you, Miss Thornton. Miss Walker replied warmly. I'm sure we'll become fast friends. As Elizabeth watched Miss Walker walk away, she couldn't help but wonder if there was more to the newcomer's story than she was letting on. Chapter 4. The Invitation. As days turned into weeks, Miss Amelia Walker settled into life in Hope Valley with surprising ease. She frequented Abigail Stanton's cafe, where she quickly became known for her insightful conversations and genuine interest in the townspeople's lives. Abigail, always the gracious hostess, took a liking to Miss Walker and invited her to help out at the cafe during busy afternoons. Miss Walker accepted eagerly, relishing the opportunity to connect with the community and showcase her culinary skills. One afternoon, as they wiped down tables and chatted amicably, Abigail couldn't resist probing gently into Miss Walker's past. You've been a wonderful addition to Hope Valley, my dear, Abigail remarked with a smile. But I can't help but wonder what brought you here. You're not like anyone we've met before. Miss Walker paused, her expression thoughtful. I suppose I was seeking a fresh start, Mrs. Stanton. A place where I could leave the past behind and embrace new opportunities. Abigail nodded understandingly, her eyes twinkling with compassion. Well, you've certainly found that here, dear. We're like a family in Hope Valley, and we look after our own. Miss Walker smiled gratefully, touched by Abigail's warmth and kindness. Thank you, Mrs. Stanton. I'm grateful to have found a place where I feel truly welcome. Chapter 5. A Turning Point As Episode 4 of Season 11 drew to a close, Hope Valley had embraced Miss Amelia Walker as one of its own. Her warmth, wit, and generosity had won over even the most skeptical residents, and she had become an integral part of the community fabric. However, amidst the camaraderie and newfound friendships, whispers of Miss Walker's past continued to linger. Some wondered if she would ever reveal the truth about what had brought her to Hope Valley, while others respected her privacy and trusted that she would share her story in her own time. For Elizabeth Thornton, Miss Walker's presence had sparked a renewed sense of curiosity and compassion. 
She continued to teach her students with dedication and care, but her thoughts often drifted to the enigmatic newcomer who had captured the hearts of the townsfolk. As she walked home one evening, Elizabeth glanced up at the starlit sky, feeling a sense of gratitude for the vibrant community she called home. She knew that Hope Valley had a way of bringing people together, of weaving their stories into the rich tapestry of its history. And as the final moments of Episode 4 faded away, viewers were left eagerly anticipating what lay ahead for Miss Amelia Walker and the beloved residents of Hope Valley. Epilogue, A new SE 11, Ep 4 Preview Newcomer has Hope Valley's tums wagging. Hallmark has released the WCTH Season 11, Episode 4 Preview video for the episode entitled Along Came a Spider. Now that Lucas, Chris McNally, is hanging out in Hope Valley, the residents are wondering what he is doing there. In this preview, their tongues are wagging as someone from the new governor's past has arrived. Moreover, she intends to reunite with him. What does this preview show? What is WCTH Season 11, Episode 4, entitled Along Came a Spider About? Firstly, what is the upcoming WCTA Season 11 episode entitled, Along Came a Spider About? According to the Hallmark synopsis, it's Easter in Hope Valley. Elizabeth, Aaron Krakow, organizes an egg hunt with help from Nathan, Kevin McGarry. A visitor from Lucas Past gets the town talking. Angela, Vienna Leacock, and Cooper, Elias Leacock, seek to mend a relationship. Now that hearts have the basic storyline, what do the preview video and the sneak peek video feature? Why that person from Lucas Bouchard's past? What happens in the when calls the heart video preview for Along Came a Spider? The fourth episode of WCTH Season 11 is called Along Came a Spider. What happens in the video preview? There is a newcomer to Hope Valley. It is none other than Jeanette Ocoin, Cecilia Deacon. Moreover, everyone wants to know about her. Her name is on everyone's tongue. However, Lucas is not really sure why she is there. Moreover, he seems concerned about her and his ex fiancé meeting. What could he be nervous about? The WCTH, along came a spider sneak peek. Lastly, the WCTH sneak peek video for Along Came a Spider shows the Coulters have a conversation about Jeanette Ocoin. Firstly, Leland, Cavan Smith, tells Rosemary, Pascal Hutton, that someone checked into the hotel. He is none other than Jeanette. Lee had to remind his wife who she was. He reminded her that Elizabeth had been held hostage at the saloon, and Jeanette's phone call warning Lucas saved the day. Next, Lee revealed that the woman that they thought of as an older widow was far from dowdy or helpless. Leland describes her as a screen siren. He then quickly realizes he has put his foot in it. But this gets Rosemary all revved up. She may be in her nightclothes, and it may be the middle of the night, but she is headed over to Elizabeth's to talk to her. This is a scoop. When can Hardy's watch Goosey TH, Along Came a Spider? The premiere of WCTA Season 11. Episode 4 entitled, Along Came a Spider is on Sunday, April 28, at 9 p.m., Eastern on the Hallmark Channel. In addition, Hardys can stream this episode on Peacock up to 72 hours after the premiere. Lastly, new episodes are available the day after the premiere on the Hallmark Movies Now app. Hardys, are you ready to learn more about the mysterious Jeanette Ocoin? The gentle hills and rustic charm of Hope Valley welcomed all who ventured into its quaint streets. Season 11 of When Calls the Heart promised to be as captivating as ever and episode four was no exception. As the episode opens, the morning sun cast a warm glow over the valley, where the townsfolk were going about their daily routines. Elizabeth Thornton, the beloved schoolteacher, walked briskly towards the schoolhouse, her mind filled with lesson plans and thoughts of her students. Little did she know, this day would bring a newcomer whose arrival would set tongues wagging and hearts fluttering. The stagecoach rumbled into town with a cloud of dust trailing behind. From within emerged a figure clad in a stylish but modest traveling dress, her demeanor poised and graceful. This was Miss Amelia Walker, a young woman with a mysterious past and a vibrant personality that instantly drew attention. As Miss Walker stepped onto the wooden platform, the town paused in curiosity. 
Murmurs and whispers spread like wildfire as the townsfolk observed the newcomer with both interest and speculation. Elizabeth, ever curious and welcoming, approached Miss Walker with a warm smile. Welcome to Hope Valley, Elizabeth greeted her, extending a hand in friendship. I'm Elizabeth Thornton, the school teacher here. We're delighted to have you. Miss Walker returned the smile graciously, her eyes bright with a hint of mischief. Thank you, Miss Thornton. It's a pleasure to finally arrive. I've heard so much about this charming town. As they exchanged pleasantries, Elizabeth couldn't help but wonder what had brought Miss Walker to Hope Valley and what secrets might lie beneath her composed exterior. Word of Miss Amelia Walker's arrival spread quickly throughout Hope Valley. At Abigail Stanton's cafe, the usual patrons buzzed with excitement as they discussed the newcomer over cups of freshly brewed coffee. Did you see the way she carried herself? Molly Davis, the town's energetic telegraph operator, exclaimed animatedly. She's not like anyone we've seen before. In the I wonder what morning brings light. Her Kate and Jack boarded a plane bound for Reykjavik, Iceland's vibrant capital city. As they flew over snow-capped mountains and icy fjords, anticipation mingled with awe at the breathtaking beauty of Iceland's rugged landscape. Upon their arrival, they were greeted by Professor Magnuson, a distinguished scholar with a twinkle in his eye and a passion for Icelandic history. He welcomed Kate and Jack warmly, outlining the expedition's objectives and emphasizing the importance of respecting the land and its ancient heritage. Their first stop was Thingvellir National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site steeped in history and natural beauty. Here, amidst rocky cliffs and moss-covered lava fields, they learned about the Althing, the world's oldest parliament established by Viking settlers over a thousand years ago. As they explored the park, Kate and Jack marveled at the ingenuity of the Vikings and their deep connection to the land. Professor Magnuson regaled them with tales of Viking sagas and mythical creatures that once roamed the Icelandic wilderness, adding to the sense of wonder and adventure that surrounded them. Chapter 4. Uncovering Clues As days turned into weeks, Kate, Jack, and Professor Magnuson delved deeper into their quest for the legendary treasure. Armed with maps, old manuscripts, and their keen instincts, they followed a trail of clues that led them to remote villages and ancient ruins scattered across Iceland's rugged terrain. Each clue brought them closer to unraveling the mystery of the treasure's location. They deciphered cryptic runes carved into stone, decoded ancient texts written in Old Norse, and pieced together fragments of Viking artifacts that hinted at the treasure's hidden whereabouts. Along the way, Kate and Jack forged a bond strengthened by their shared passion for history and their determination to uncover the truth. Despite their differences in approach, Kate driven by academic curiosity, Jack guided by his instincts as a storyteller. They complemented each other perfectly, forming a formidable team. Their journey was not without challenges. They faced treacherous weather conditions, navigated treacherous terrain, and encountered unexpected obstacles that tested their resolve. Yet, with each challenge overcome, their belief in the treasure's existence grew stronger, fueling their determination to succeed. Chapter 5. The Discovery At long last, after weeks of exploration and discovery, Kate, Jack, and Professor Magnuson stood before a towering waterfall hidden deep within Iceland's interior. According to the ancient texts they had studied, this waterfall was the final marker on the path to the treasure. With hearts pounding with excitement, they followed a narrow trail that led behind the cascading water. There, nestled within a rocky alcove obscured from view, they uncovered a wooden chest adorned with intricate carvings and runes. As they carefully opened the chest, a hushed silence fell over the group. Inside lay a collection of priceless artifacts, a golden torque, ancient coins, and a well-preserved manuscript written in Old Norse. It was a treasure trove that spoke of Iceland's rich history and the resilience of its people through centuries of turmoil and change. For Kate, Jack, and Professor Magnuson, the discovery was more than just a triumph of archaeology. It was a testament to the power of curiosity perseverance, and the enduring spirit of adventure that binds humanity across time and culture. Epilogue A Journey of Discovery As Kate and Jack returned to Evergreen, their hearts and minds filled with memories of their Icelandic adventure,
They knew that their lives had been forever changed by the Christmas quest. The treasure they had unearthed was not just a collection of ancient artifacts. It was a reminder of the importance of preserving history and embracing the wonder of exploration. Back in Evergreen, as snow blanketed the town and Christmas lights twinkled in the night, Kate and Jack shared their story with friends and family gathered around a crackling fire. Their journey had brought them closer together deepening their bond and reaffirming their belief in the magic of the holiday season. And as Hallmark viewers across the world tuned in to watch The Christmas Quest, they too were transported on a journey of discovery and wonder. For in the heartwarming tale of Kate, Jack, and their Icelandic adventure, they found echoes of their own dreams and aspirations wrapped in the spirit of Christmas and the joy of unexpected treasures found. Acknowledgements Special thanks to Lacey Chabert, Christopher Palaha, and the creative team behind The Christmas Quest for bringing this enchanting story to life. Thank you for joining Kate and Jack on their adventure in The Christmas Quest. I hope you enjoyed this tale of discovery, friendship, and the magic of the holiday season. May your own quests and, and candid social me. media post. Carlos and Alexa revealed that they had lost their fourth baby. The news was met with an outpouring of support and sympathy from their fans, friends, and fellow celebrities. The couple's willingness to share their grief highlighted the importance of addressing and acknowledging the pain of pregnancy loss. The emotional toll. Pregnancy loss is a deeply traumatic experience, and the emotional toll it takes on parents is profound. Carlos and Alexa have been open about their journey through grief, sharing their struggles and the steps they are taking to heal. Their candidness has provided comfort to many who have faced similar losses, showing that they are not alone in their pain. Coping with grief. Grieving the loss of a child is an incredibly personal process, and everyone copes differently. Carlos and Alexa have leaned on their faith, each other, and their support network to navigate this challenging time. They have also emphasized the importance of seeking professional help, such as therapy, to address the emotional impact of their loss. Chapter 3. The Importance of Support Systems Family and Friends In times of grief, the support of family and friends is invaluable. Carlos and Alexa have expressed their gratitude for the love and encouragement they have received from their loved ones. Their experience underscores the importance of having a strong support system to lean on during difficult times. Community and Fans The couple's openness about their loss has fostered a sense of community among their fans. Many people have shared their own stories of pregnancy loss, creating a space for mutual support and understanding. This sense of community can be incredibly healing, as it reminds those who are grieving that they are not alone. Professional help. Seeking professional help, such as therapy or counseling, can be crucial for processing grief and healing. Carlos and Alexa have advocated for the importance of mental health care, highlighting that there is no shame in seeking help. Professional support can provide the tools and guidance needed to navigate the complexities of grief. Chapter 4. The Impact of Pregnancy Loss – The Silent Struggle Pregnancy loss is a common, yet often silent, struggle. Many parents suffer in silence, feeling isolated and misunderstood. By sharing their story, Carlos and Alexa had helped to break the silence and stigma surrounding pregnancy loss, encouraging others to speak out and seek support. The physical and emotional impact. The physical and emotional impact of pregnancy loss can be overwhelming. Physically, it can involve significant pain and medical intervention. Emotionally, the grief can be all-consuming, affecting every aspect of life. Understanding and acknowledging these impacts is crucial for providing appropriate support and care. The need for awareness and education. Raising awareness about pregnancy loss is essential for fostering empathy and understanding. Education can help dispel myths and misconceptions and promote a more compassionate and supportive response to those who are grieving. Carlos and Alexa's story has contributed to this important conversation. Chapter 5. Moving Forward. Finding Strength in Faith. For Carlos and Alexa, their faith has been a source of strength and comfort during this difficult time. They have shared how their beliefs have helped them find hope and peace, even in the midst of their grief. Their faith has also provided a framework for understanding and processing their loss. Honoring their baby's memory. 
Honoring the memory of their baby is an important part of the healing process for Carlos and Alexa. They have expressed their intention to keep their baby's memory alive, finding ways to celebrate and remember the life that was lost. This can be a meaningful and therapeutic practice for many parents who have experienced pregnancy loss. Carlos and Alexa have turned their pain into a mission to support others who are going through similar experiences. By sharing their story and advocating for awareness, they hope to provide comfort and encouragement to those who are grieving. Their openness and compassion are making a difference in the lives of many. Chapter 6. The Broader Conversation on Pregnancy Loss Breaking the Silence Carlos and Alexa's story has helped to break the silence surrounding